It's Monday. It's May 22nd. And the word of the day is ramfeasled, which means wrung out and exhausted, even though it's only Tuesday. Used in a sentence, you can avoid feeling ramfeasled by always working on Saturday and Sunday, yeah. too. What's and then the, just, you know, make your coffee at home, and you are a rich person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the best thing I can say about our production schedule is that it only leaves us feeling ramfeasled one day a week. <laughs> I don't understand what you guys are talking I work like two days a week. Are you guys working more than two days a week? <laughs> okay. I hate you so much. <laughs> I am no illusions. <laughs> I'm Eli Bosnick. You're fired. I'm Heath Enright. <laughs> and broadcasting delayed. No, you're not. From America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, the price of freedom might be Robux. <laughs> Mickey Mouse kicks DeSantis in the ball so hard their vocal ranges match. <laughs> <laughs> and we start a GoFundMe to clone George Santos and ask what George would say. Oh, interesting. But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, no illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, we've landed on an arbitrary number with zeros. Happy bicentennial. Yeah. Oh. Sort of. I, I'm sort of make a big deal out of stuff like this. If for no reason, then it reminds me. Our species is so dumb, we had to make the base number of our math system match the number of fingers we had. So, okay. <laughs> should have done 12. Yeah. Or had 12 yes, fingers. Absolutely. See, yeah. Now, I'm saying, Heath, Noah sent us cookies when scathing hit a bunch of zeros. So, I you did. know, where are my cookies? Where are my cookies, Heath? <laughs> I didn't get any cookies. I feel like Lucinda sent those. No, did you make those, Noah? Lucinda didn't make them either. Lucinda didn't make them either. Oh, they were from like the cool place. They were from the lost. It was very nice. And they had vegan ones and they were so soft and delicious. Okay, yeah, no, Eli, I'm going to send you some of those. So just uh, be ready. I've never gotten any of the cookies. I'm just saying. I'm in the position. (laughs) You don't get any cookies, no. (laughs) Lucinda makes such good stuff. You're right there all the time and I'm not anymore. I know you are right now. There's probably pancakes and like a cool... Thing with brownie slash some other dessert smushed together somehow. <laughs> she always does slash the desserts, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best. Who makes one dessert? In our lead story tonight, there's no more lying in the entire universe hmm. because George Santos did all of the lying in the universe. This is like the end of a weird Coke party. And now that we know, he said approximately zero true things ever, ever, ever. Federal prosecutors decided to charge him with crimes related to a tiny subset of his lying. So now he's facing 13 federal charges. That would be seven counts of wire fraud, three counts of money laundering, two counts of lying to Congress, and one count of stealing public funds. Think about how hard you need to lie for it to be illegal for a congressman, right? He's known as the lying <laughs> congressman. That would be like being known as the fucking crass bokoblin. Okay, Noah, what did we say about the Zelda references? When it's you got it's back? all the things in my head right now. I'm sorry, it's all I've got. He spent six minutes at the beginning of the record trying to fuse his water cup and his mic, everybody. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. There's a rocket sword, apparently, though. I learned there's a rocket sword. There's a rocket sword. sword. So here's a very much incomplete list of George Santos's lying. I'll start with his very obvious lie to collect unemployment benefits. Just a typical Republican who doesn't want to work. But he actually was working, but he was working for a literal Ponzi scheme whilst collecting unemployment benefits. During the height of the COVID pandemic, He collected over $24,000 in unemployment benefits from New York State during that time. And we know this by very easily checking. He was earning about $120,000 a year as a regional director at Harbor City Capital based in Florida. And immediately following his time there, Harbor City got charged by the SEC for being a very obvious Ponzi scheme that stole $17 million from investors. Jesus Christ. I said this elsewhere, but his crimes are like a dishonesty fractal. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. But this does beg the question, if you're on unemployment and you become a meth dealer, do you have to cancel your unemployment? What do you write on the form? (laughs) I don't know. But that's like less than what George Santos was doing. So he also lied to his political donors during his campaign for Congress. That includes large donations to an LLC operated by Santos that was not registered as a super PAC. And apparently 
He just took a bunch of that money and paid off his personal credit cards, paid what? car loans, and paid back his idiot friends who lent him money somehow. <laughs> and he also bought himself a bunch of obnoxiously expensive designer clothing. It, it's like he realized that list was in danger of ending with and paid back friends that loaned him money and was afraid he would like lose <laughs> evil points. He's like, add some douchey overpriced clothes, though. I, I, would, I, have, I, would <laughs> I have a reputation to uphold. Yeah, exactly. Also, I'm sorry, just asking for a friend. Using the money people donate to charity to pay off your credit card debt is illegal, right? Illegal. I'm asking for a friend. Yes. Yeah, you said that. Okay. okay. Also worth noting, I am the Sant friend. You're the friend. Yeah, got it. <laughs> Santos lied to his political donors and potential voters when he said, well, just about any single sentence regarding yeah. his entire background. Yeah. That includes the lie about where he went to high school, which accomplishes nothing. It's such a weird lie. He said he went to a prestigious high school in New York City called Horace Mann. He did not. He also claimed he got a degree in economics and finance from Baruch College in 2010. He did not. And also, considering he said he left high school in 2008, that means he finished a four-year program in two years, all whilst being an imbecile. And we know that. And just to make it even dumber, he claimed he was the star of the volleyball team at Baruch, which they is impossible. It's that's such a bizarrely mid-level lie in every way, right? Like all of them. Yeah, that. second place trophy case here. <laughs> oh my. And speaking of bizarre mid-level lies, much like Eli, George Santos claims to have attended NYU. Talks about it all the time. Well, with all that amazing education stuff on his resume, Santos got high-powered jobs at Goldman Sachs and Citigroup. No, he did not. Nope, none of that. Right after getting sworn into Congress, the New York Times got a copy of his resume, which said that stuff about Goldman Sachs and Citigroup. And it's a giant list of lies on that resume. It's also just, in general, a terrible, terrible resume. The first section is a list of 18 bullet-pointed skills, including... Currency and coin counter. <laughs> fucking, fucking. I, no, no, I, you know, I like it. I know my nickels from my dimes. It's a very back to basics approach for a banker. Start at the <laughs> beginning, damn it. I like it. Okay. I will need to see him make at least one roll of pennies before I believe <laughs> any. No <laughs> fucking shot. The, the key is the hex fold. You get the hex fold. That, that is important. Yeah. <laughs> and just in case his lying wasn't a literal example of the capper to a sketch about a liar. He worked in the Pulse nightclub massacre, 9-11, and the literal Holocaust. There yep. it is. He claimed he lost four employees during the nightclub shooting. Nope. He also said his mother was working in the South Tower in New York City on September 11th, and that the attack, quote, took his mother's life. And then I guess he remembered that she didn't die in 2001. No. So uh, he added, no, she died a few years later from the 9-11 cancer. And also, no. All that got checked, he's lying. Even the word few in that was a lie. <laughs> she died 15 years later. Well, that's when somebody, I guess, said to him, hey, George, I think you need to ramp up the lying from where you are right now. So he also claimed that his grandparents survived the Holocaust. And CNN had a genealogist look into that, and nope, definitely lying. <laughs> they found out his family is not even slightly Jewish, which is another claim that he made. He <laughs> said he was Jewish, and then he backpedaled from that and said, I meant Jew-ish. But also, no, not even a little-ish bit Jewish. None. <laughs> okay, all right, but I, like... Like his grandparents did survive the Holocaust, though, right? Like they, they, they weren't there. <laughs> yeah. If so anything, it sounds like they won the Holocaust. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. And let's not forget the history of insane crimes that he was very likely involved with that aren't even part of this big indictment. That includes a racket of skimming credit card numbers from ATM machines, claiming he started an animal charity that never existed, swindling a disabled veteran with a dying dog yeah. out of the money from a GoFundMe for the dog to get treatment, passing bad checks 
to purchase puppies from an Amish guy. Maybe he was Amish. I don't know. But he did that, too. And then I have to assume he was selling black market puppies that he stole from an yeah. Amish guy. Yeah, you're walking away with a puppy. It's weird that he only took cash and had an ATM in his house, right? That's weird. <laughs> okay, and just a couple other details of late. First of all, the Republican Party is standing behind George Santos. Yeah. Shocker. A few members of the party have spoken out against him, but that didn't stop Every single House Republican from voting against a motion to have him expelled from Congress last week, which he very obviously should be. Instead, all those Republicans are stalling it and sending it to the Ethics Committee, which, of course, they control now. And then one day later, Santos officially plowed ahead with his campaign for reelection and named himself the treasurer oh my God. of his campaign <laughs> committee. He will be in charge of that money. Oh, my. You, and Republican voters are so brainwashed at this point that a significant number of them are going to donate to his campaign and protest against big ourselves, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Calling it now, by 2026, Republican loyalty will be reduced to letting Lindsey Graham root through your house with a big sack with a dollar sign on it. Like, that's... <laughs> That's where we're headed. The only place we can go from here, yeah. Lindsay, if you want to come over to my house anytime you want to do that, <laughs> love it. And just to round this all out, the whole 13 count indictment, the part about lying to Congress was because every candidate has to file a set of financial disclosure forms when they run for a seat in the House. And since his entire life is a goddamn lie, whatever he wrote down either had to be full of lies or had to be accompanied by Santos, like, showing up in person and surrendering to authorities in several U.S. states and also Brazil mm -hmm. for being the dumbest criminal ever. <laughs> or one other possibility, he's the greatest long con we ever pulled off to embarrass the Republican Party. Oh, yeah. And he is, in fact, Eli Bosnick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I think we're going to need a quick break for a word from our sponsor, Policy Genius. Well, and uh, Lucinda obviously gets all my bright blossom seeds. Bright blossom seeds, got it. Hey, hey fellas, what you doing there? Oh, uh, Noah's making a will, but uh, for Zelda. Why? Well, because the Kingdom of Hyrule doesn't have policy genius, silly. Oh, what's policy genius? Policy Genius was built to modernize the life insurance industry. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. With Policy Genius, you can find insurance policies that start at just $25 per month for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. So nobody needs to know how often I've been gloom stricken to death in the depths? Exactly. Policy Genius has licensed agents who help you find the best fit for your needs. They work for you, not the insurance companies. That means they don't have any incentive to recommend one insurer over another so you can trust their guidance. Plus, there are no added fees and your personal details are private. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Wow, that sounds great. So where do I sign up? Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to Policy Genius or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. All right. Well, I got to ask who gets the Master Sword? Ooh. Yeah. Right. No, I was, I, was, I was thinking Marsh. Marsh? How Seriously? dare you? you? You guys would fuse it to a rocket. I can't take chances. It's this is true, we would do that. It makes us go faster. And we're back. Next up in headlines in discordant news. Call me a snob. Call me an elitist. But I'm starting to think that entrusting the bottom quarter of our high school classes with our military secrets might okay. not be the best idea. You're a snob and an elitist. <laughs> yep. And this concern bubbles to the surface ever more frequently as we uncover more information about the multiple warnings the military received about Pentagon leak suspect Jack 
Texia Terra. Teixeira. Teixeira. Mark Teixeira. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Which they ignored because their recruitment model seems to be how else are you going to pay for college? Yeah, no, I, I honestly, I feel like this is the inevitable outcome when your employment requirements demand that you find like the right level of fascist. Yeah, you're going to miss that target. <laughs> the Goldilocks. Yes, exactly. Fascism. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're not familiar with this story, a few months ago, a significant amount of military intelligence suddenly appeared on the dark web. This included troop movements, strategic policy, even photos and videos captured by American spies, and an international investigation was launched. Agents were recalled from foreign nations. Politicians were put under investigation as possible spies for foreign powers. Until finally it was discovered that the 21-year-old Air National Guardsman had revealed the information on his 150-member Minecraft Discord server... Come on. To prove he worked for the government. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, quick idea. Maybe we don't let Air Force fucking understudies National Guardsmen <laughs> have, like, Q-level clearance to secret plans about moving troops and eating babies or whatever he's privy to? Seriously? <laughs> yeah. So you might be wondering to yourself, okay, Eli, what warnings did the U.S. military have that Jack Ronosaurus Tex might be a threat? Well, it turns out a lot. First things first, back in 2018, when Jack was in high school, he was suspended for making racist threats while bragging about knowing how to make bombs and Molotov cocktails. And, present company excluded, of course, getting kicked out of high school for violent threats is okay. something I wish the Air Force <laughs> had taken note of before giving him access to military secrets. I don't think I need to be excluded. Like, they shouldn't hire me either, right? right? Yeah, no, look, look I, I get that the violent threats that got me kicked out of high school weren't racist as a weak defense, but I'm with Heath. <laughs> Any rule for handling classified material should definitely include a and don't show it to Noah type people clause somehow. Yeah, fair, fair. Me too. But maybe you're thinking, Eli, that was before he was in the military. Heath had a goatee in those high school pictures his mom sent. No, we all make mistakes. It was a Van Dyke. <laughs> well, didn't as, connect. It's different. <laughs> as will surprise no one, this was far from an isolated incident. The Washington Post uncovered a much more recent video of him shooting a target while yelling racial and ethnic slurs. And that was while he was employed by the Air Force. He wrote on social media about wanting to kill a, quote, fuck ton of people because it would be, quote, culling the weak-minded, end quote. Cool. Well, like COVID, but bad. Oh, okay. yeah. Bad oh, version Jesus. of that. Yeah, no, I mean, honestly, it seems like a glass houses type goal from a dude who was coaxed into historical level felonies by a double dog dare. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A and it does actually get worse. He also Googled several mass shootings on the job and phrases like standoff with feds and mass shooting on his work computer, an activity that should have automatically triggered a security investigation, but for reasons we still do not know, did not. I uh, Okay, I am not okay with the idea of judging a person's moral character based on their Google search history. I just, I want that <laughs> on the record. Thank you. I've searched like David A.R. White. Yeah, so right, exactly. Times. That's not acceptable. Right. <laughs> Noah, am I going to find Bo Coblin hentai on your computer if I look no, for it? I, 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 <laughs> Gerudo, baby. But no, no. <laughs> All right. Yes, for David A. R. Whitehead. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> oh, Angelo. Angelo, you get a free weekend <laughs> this summer. Put it in the Dropbox. You know what to do. Now, maybe you're thinking to yourself, okay, Eli, those are all evidence that he's dangerous, but were there any warnings that Jack might reveal confidential military information? Yup. In September of 2022, Jack was, quote, admonished by his superiors for reportedly scribbling down notes during a confidential meeting and slipping what? the piece of paper into his pocket. Why would you get pencil and paper there? What is happening? <laughs> he was given a cease and desist order preventing him from conducting any deep dives into classified intelligence information, but Tyrannosaurus Tex was caught taking notes a second time just one month Later, Jesus, and then again in February of 2023, what? Texasaurus was observed, quote, viewing content that was not related to his duties. And hey, 
Uh, Air Force or whatever, good rule of thumb. If your confidential meeting ends with the boss telling the person, spit it out, drop it. <laughs> Did you put paper in your mouth just now? <laughs> drop it like it's a puppy. That person is also fired on top of being yelled yeah, at. Yeah, no, look, 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 normally I err on the side of leniency, but I'm not super happy with the three strikes policy on <laughs> espionage. Nope, nope, <laughs> it's not great. There, there are rare moments that I'm sad this is not a video medium, but the fact that we can't do a sketch of him trying to gently slide a piece of yellow notebook paper into his pants pocket <laughs> during a top secret meeting. It's a real loss. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, Tashashora is Tashara. currently in jail. It's so easy. Just say Tashara. You hear the noises we're making, right? Got it. Tibur is currently in jail <laughs> awaiting trial under the American Espionage Act because... Apparently, people are just committing crimes from the Americans these days for internet cred. Yeah. But, you know, that's what happens when your number one recruitment source is a war game on the Xbox. Yeah. So. Not even on the PlayStation. <laughs> and in Baby Gun... <laughs> the platform is a lot of the issues. That's right? really... Because who the fuck has an Xbox? I mean, I have an Poor Xbox. Poor people. <laughs> but you have old Nintendos. You have that's, a Yeah, right. I've got everything. And in Baby Got Bakhmut news, as <laughs> thank you. That's excellent. As fucked up as it is that some racist Minecraft troll can bamboozle the American military and intelligence apparatus for no greater remuneration than Discord badges, it does provide us an interesting behind-the-scenes snapshot of our military intelligence at work. And and mostly that's just depressing and/or terrifying. But every so mm -hmm. often, it's also fucking hilarious. As was the case when we learned last week that the leader of the largest mercenary group aiding Russia's military efforts in Ukraine offered to sell out Russian troop positions if Ukrainian forces agreed to a timeout in Bakhmut. <laughs> oh, man, that hurts, like, emotionally, right? I would imagine. I mean, you hire a band of black ops mercenaries, you expect a certain level of trust yes, and loyalty. Thank you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now... Bakhmut has been in the news recently after Russian allies declared that they'd finally taken the city. Uh, and then Ukrainian officials are like, okay, yeah, but what about this part, this part, and this part? And Russian allies amended it to say they'd mostly taken the city. Uh, but, but it's have been. They? Yeah, no, <laughs> they haven't. Um, <laughs> but it, it's been the site of some of the hardest fighting in the war since August of last year. And I'd encourage you to look it up on a map if you don't know your Ukrainian geography, if for no other reason to see how just barely into Ukraine from Russia it is. Right. Like, like, imagine somebody's been invading the U.S. from the northeast since February of last fucking year. And they're just now getting to New Hampshire, but not quite. <laughs> Guys, you're bragging. That's just a tree fort in Maine. Just <laughs> in a tree there. One tree. I told Russia not to make George Santos a general, but did they listen to me? No, it was the resume. They couldn't Clearly help not. it. Yeah, right, right. So so anyway, so the, the folks doing most of the fighting in Bakhmut on the Russian side are from this mercenary outfit called the Wagner Group, uh, which is led by a Russian oligarch named Yevgeny Prigozhin. Uh, and this dude is a close Putin ally, like, like to the point where he's known as Putin's chef because he owns one of the three restaurants that Putin can still go to and count on not getting poisoned at. No, I get it. <laughs> but 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 he's been in the news a, a lot recently for his increasingly profane tirades about what a shit job Putin's government is doing supplying his troops in the fields. Uh, but it turns out that might not have been the high point of his frustration, because apparently back in January of this year, w with his forces dying by the thousand in human wave attacks, he apparently offered up tr Russian troop positions if Ukrainian commanders agreed to withdraw their forces from the area. Hey, Vlad? If you're looking for a mercenary team that won't cheat on you, give me a shout. <laughs> Very <laughs> competitive pricing that I have. Got. Oh, okay. But when I offer our podcast as a vehicle for human rights abuses, Noah has to go to The Hague and pretend he was on vacation. Well, I, I hate being the new guy. I was actually there because the new Zelda game dropped six hours earlier. In, it did in drop six hours yeah. earlier in The Hague. Now, now, for their part, Ukrainian officials have confirmed the, that uh, Prigozhin made the offer on multiple occasions, actually, but they turned him down because they didn't trust his information. Um, and let's be clear here, too, that we, we learned from the Discord leaks as well that the U.S. intelligence agencies have infiltrated virtually every level of Russia's military, so much so that Ukrainian leadership probably knows way more about Russian troop positions than Prigozhin does. Um, so it's also possible that they just didn't need his info. I mean, pretty easy to 
disrupt the Russian forces. We have a full stack of diamonds to offer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, of course, to be fair to the Ukrainians here, it's also entirely possible, if not probable, that the billionaire oligarch mercenary Putin ally wasn't trustworthy, uh, and he was just making a bogus offer with the full knowledge of the Kremlin. Both Ukrainian and U.S. officials have confirmed that that is the working theory, and other leaked intelligence suggests that the Kremlin was fully aware of the details of Prigozhin's offer back in January. Uh, so as much as I'd love it to be otherwise, this probably was a feint. That being said, the fact that a year plus into a fight with a country that has a fifth of their military, Russia's resorting to disingenuous coke dealer tactics, probably more damning than it would be if their guy was just selling them out, right? I like that no one knows about the strategy of coke dealers. Yeah, oh, yeah, I yeah, was no. just about, I was going to say, I'm sitting on a couch with Prigozhin's teenage girlfriend in a band t-shirt, just being like, do you know when um, he'll be back? <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> What grade are you? And you know what? Don't tell me. Don't tell me. <laughs> no. Nope. Nope. <laughs> and next up in headlines, we have a story about Kanye West, Milo Yiannopoulos, and Marjorie Taylor Greene, and Donald Trump. And against all odds, it does not involve an insane public tirade using anti-Semitic slur words. Huh. Honestly, I think it's safe to assume that's tacitly included. Like, if these people had thought bubbles, we'd be seeing that stuff pretty much all the time unless you asked them a really tricky riddle or something like that. So here's how those terrible people all connected last week. Milo used campaign money from MTG to buy a website for Kanye and then got reimbursed with campaign money from Kanye for more than the cost of the website. Now, all of them are in trouble. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sorry, Heath, you're telling me the guy who pretends he's not gay anymore so he can read the Bible for Rick Warren's viewers isn't fiscally responsible? Shocked, I say. Shocked. <laughs> well, And that the campaign practices of Marjorie Taylor Greene and Kanye West are unethical and stupid? It's a good thing we were sitting down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... Quick refresher on the ragtag band of bigots involved here. Kanye recently said he's going death con three on Jewish people sick and not with like a bunch of really good context for that genocidal remark. Just apropos of nothing. He's doing that. Uh, not anymore, Heath. He saw 21 Jump Street and Jonah Hill's performance made him forgive the Jews. He <laughs> oh, that's said right. it on Instagram. Oh, Keep yeah, up. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, no, he, he canceled the genocide for now. Cool, yeah. cool, totally. And we also have MTG who said that Jewish Illuminati people own space lasers that started wildfires in <laughs> California in order to advance the evil environmentalist agenda. Yeah. And then she went to the Holocaust Museum and learned the Holocaust was bad. <laughs> yes, yes. You're, you're really being unforgiving today. Yeah, like, no, you keep totally. bringing up she, old shit. Yeah. That people yeah, yeah. grow she, she was, and change. She was only 47 at that point when she learned the Holocaust was bad. It's a fair point. Good you had defense, a goatee. Eli. You had a goatee. He's a Van Dyke. I'm putting the phone And that brings up, I'm not talking about this right now. That brings <laughs> us to Milo, a self proclaimed ex gay person who's now a professional Christian right bigot influencer. And apparently that includes being a political operative for very serious campaigns like Kanye West 2024. And following Donald Trump's loss in the 2020 election, Milo was so fucking devastated that he, quote, renounced his homosexuality, which he commemorated by allegedly throwing a, quote, sodomy stone engagement ring what? worth $150,000 into the ocean. I, di I, I didn't even know that Gaydom had a turn in your badge and gun ceremony. But oh, they do. Yeah, yeah. No, they totally do. I, I, I bet the community is devastated to learn it's based on James Cameron's di Titanic, though. That's <laughs> tacky. Sorry, just give me a second. I need to enjoy the memory of all the people who told me I only talked about Milo because I was jealous. I mm -hmm. just need to... Yeah, this thing wasn't really <laughs> sure. that bad, I guess. <laughs> I'll give you another second. I'll Thank give you, you another second. There it is. Okay, so here's how these idiots all got in trouble. It all starts at Mar-a-Lago in November of last year. Milo, Kanye, and hate group leader Nick Fuentes all met with Donald Trump for a nice, intimate dinner together. It was a fun time. Kanye decided to fire up his presidential campaign, and apparently Milo got hired as a consultant for that campaign. 
Milo was also working for MTG, and that night, he used a credit card from MTG's campaign to buy the website yay2024.com on GoDaddy. That cost $7,000, which is already insane. And then, because Milo's a lying fuck weasel, he got reimbursed by Kanye's campaign for ten thousand dollars. <laughs> they all yeah. suck so bad. <laughs> okay, counterpoint. So much counterpoint. It is nice to know that someone has cost their company more in website expenses than I have. Okay. Right? <laughs> yeah. No, I feel like I in the interest of honesty, you should have to add dot 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 so far to that statement. But yeah, okay. <laughs> At Tim, best. Tim messaged me this morning. He was like, hey, people have asked, like, what are all the websites you bought? And I was like, hey, shut the fuck up, man. No. Why are we, <laughs> why are we doing this? I have a child. You can't well, see them. Thanks to election laws, none of the stuff I just said is legal. No. Uh-uh. According to Brendan Fisher, an expert in campaign finance law, if the MTG campaign paid for Kanye's website, that is, quote, an excessive and unreported in-kind contribution to his campaign. And for Kanye, by spending more than $5,000, he's now officially a candidate and he has to register, which he has oh, not no. done. <laughs> also not allowed. And in terms of Milo, he's guilty of stealing. Yeah, just stealing. Of the yeah, fucking just stealing. <laughs> <laughs> That's illegal too, apparently. And the MTG campaign could be guilty of enabling that theft in some sense and allowing an employee to convert campaign money to his personal benefit. Right. Again, illegal. Okay. So all we need is for Marjorie Taylor Greene to have stolen the credit card from Milo. And then it's actually a full circle. Yeah. And does. everyone gets to go home. It's actually fine. Or a Boris of stupid and illegal. Yeah. That's the people I was just talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. So... Here's the bottom line, Eli. I think you know exactly what to do. Domain name prank war with Kanye and MTG. Make it happen. On it. Wait, did you say Kanye or Kara? Because I, <laughs> I'm yes, different I did. levels of Anya. And in way over Wahoo news. What? Heath and Mai's home state of New York finally implemented the ban on indigenous team names, logos, and mascots this month. But some individuals, seemingly just asking questions, have expressed their resistance. So this week, the state released further guidance on how to transition away from racially insensitive logos for adults in charge of education. Jesus. Because this is America. And that's how it works now. Sorry, there's a how to that? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's just don't, right? Like, if people need a flow chart for that, they're fucking fired. You can't yeah. have your job in education. I don't I don't want to live in a world where make it black has to be an academic discipline. Yeah. It's illegal in a lot of states now. Yeah. So what, you might ask, are some of the frequently asked questions about how do you not say a slur? Just <laughs> yeah. don't, man. What? Yeah. I I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Let's go over a few of my favorites. Question one. Does this regulation require us to change the name of our school, school building, school district, or town? Uh, the answer to that one is no, because... That's not what a team name means. Okay, what about all the signage on my segregated tree house <laughs> and every t-shirt I own? This is untenable. I don't understand. I'm just asking questions. But, but like but also like look, if your school, building, district or town has a racist fucking name, go ahead and also change that. Why would that just <laughs> change it? Next question, quote, as a district how do we know if our team's name, mascot, oh, or logos have a connection with hey, indigenous nations? Uh, or if you have to past? ask, change it. <laughs> yep. Yep. Here's what New York State says. Quote, districts can conduct research using a variety of primary sources, including historical them. photos, yearbooks, or district slash local records. Not adding, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Guess <laughs> you know. Uh, it's disturbing for all kinds of reasons that how do we learn things is a frequently asked question by schools, right? Okay, this next question is my favorite. Quote, can we appeal the prohibition on using team names, logos, and mascots in my district? Can, can you appeal the law? <laughs> yeah. 
The answer is no. That's not how laws work, Robert E. Lee, but thanks for checking. <laughs> yeah. Good question. You can secede, though. Yeah. Go ahead. Try that out. <laughs> secede. And then, of course, last but not least, the one we've all been waiting for, quote, our district's team name, mascot, and logo have connections to indigenous nations and peoples. However... A substantial portion of district residents are opposed to the change. What should we do? End quote. Secede. Yeah. And New York State <laughs> first acknowledges that it's it's hard to stop being racist. And then, and I'm not kidding, <laughs> it recommends referring those residents to the American Psychological Association's guidance on the harm caused by racist mascots. Jesus. And I gotta be honest with you guys. I don't. I don't think that's gonna do it. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. do the trick. I don't think so either. Because first of all, the APA is a Ponzi scheme, mm -hmm. and oh. also so are books. That yeah. is not gonna go over very well <laughs> with the secessionists. Uh, but to be fair to the state, like I'm sure the first draft's answer on that one was aggressively not give a shit is what you should do. So kudos to them for thinking of something that sounds like they're taking that concern <laughs> seriously. Well done, New York. Yeah, it's a tough creative writing exercise, and they nailed it. So yeah, uh, in spite of those terrifying FAQs, this is actually good news for the state and the nation. I am proud to announce that my hometown of Binghamton can continue with its mascots, the Fighting Something Italians, because that is still <laughs> cool. Yep. Go Wops! Jesus. Wait, what? Yeah. And, <laughs> and finally crime. tonight, in Mouse Gets Fired news... Decreasingly hopeful Republican presidential hopeful Ron DeSantis is still getting his ass kicked by a cartoon mouse. And the latest twist in that tit for tat between the Florida governor and the state's largest private employer was a twisted tit for DeSantis after Disney announced that they were canceling plans <laughs> to build a billion dollar corporate campus in Florida and instead redirecting those 2000 plus jobs to California. Fantastic. Where you're allowed to say gay. Okay, my favorite part of this is how the entire GOP philosophy is about corporate freedom. But now they're all whining, being like, fuck, okay, ah, hold on. The invisible hand of the market is not being homophobic like I figured it <laughs> would be. It's time out right, interference right. on economics. Adam Smith doesn't count. For wait, a second. wait. Noah, are you telling me that a guy nobody had heard of but his mom until five years ago can't, in fact, take on a century old entertainment empire? But he had boots, Noah. Yeah, no, boots, I say. Right, wait. So, so, yeah, so ultimately, this probably matters a little less than. The very promising lawsuit Disney's filed against the state over DeSantis's targeted harassment, a case bolstered by the fact that he brags about criming the crime in his stupid fucking book. But when a huge part of your political image yeah, is that your laissez faire economic policies will inspire corporate investment, losing thousands of jobs to the fucking People's Republic of Wokistan on the eve of officially announcing your presidential <laughs> candidacy, not a great look. Okay, correction, I have two favorite parts because I just learned yesterday that Ronnie D's top candidate to be his running mate is Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. Here's to 200 more episodes, fellas. Everything's oh, going to be all right. Let's hope. It's uh, going to be okay. Let's, let's hope that's just <laughs> <laughs> Hey, they do a vice presidential candidate debate. They do. Yeah, yeah they yeah. do. Mm -hmm. Kamala Harris versus Sarah Huckabee Sanders? Kamala Harris against SHS. I cannot wait. Now, for their part, uh, DeSantis's offer fired back with, to this news with a response that basically translates to, go on with your broke ass. Uh, according to his press <laughs> secretary, Jeremy Redfern, they were pretty sure Disney was never going to build that campus anyway, adding, quote, given the company's financial straits, falling market cap, and declining stock price, it is unsurprising, end quote. Um, though it's it's honestly it's not clear if that was originally a statement meant for Disney or if he was just cribbing his notes on the presidential campaign for DeSantis there. <laughs> Biggest employer in our state was already failing in your face. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> If, I, if I'm reading correctly, their company is filled with dying old people and the younger generation hates them. Got him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But as much as I hate to do it, I have to admit that there is some degree of truth in, in Redfern's assessment, because at the same time that they announced this shit, Disney also announced that they'd be closing down the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel in Orlando, as though that was also like 
out of their anti-DeSantis spite and not because it's a fucking $2,500 a night Star Wars cosplay hotel with tiny rooms and no swimming pool. That was a stupid idea and nobody wanted it. Um, the company- I wanted it. No, you didn't. Not enough to spend $5,000 for two fucking nights you didn't. I don't have $5,000, no illusions. <laughs> That's the problem. So the, the company is also in the midst of cutting 7,000 jobs in an effort to cut costs by $5.5 billion because like every technology and entertainment company in 2020 they saw the huge increases they thought well the pandemic economy shall surely last forever and then got caught off guard when it didn't yeah well i guess as long as they don't cease producing the only content that makes them money while their writers try to wrestle an extremely oh, tiny Jesus. raise out of them they'll be fine yeah, right no, then they'll, 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 they'll all be good um yeah but but still though th this is a story about ron DeSantis getting his ass kicked by a topless mouse with decorative buttons on his shorts and and <laughs> when you're trying to sell yourself as the defender of traditional masculinity that's never that's not a great look never a great look Please keep running for president. I'm <laughs> Do it, baby. looking forward to this. The Trumpers haven't even come for him yet. I'm so happy. Yeah. I can't wait for that fight to happen. They're such idiots. And on that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. Thanks to Ron DeSantis. Thanks to Sarah Huckabee Sanders. And thanks to all the listeners who like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and send us feedback on the other various Okay, internets. but those people are all pissed off now that they were on the same list as Ron DeSantis and, and Sarah Hogan. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> yeah, you you ruined it. Yeah. <laughs> please keep doing that. Please keep listening. And please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like three or George... Why hasn't Eli bought a blue check Twitter account for John Benet Ramsey? Toast with a capital T at the beginning and end. Tyler Alex Allen. Lanfair Pulgwin Glil Gagri Shinner Rabble Wolf Skanda Gaga 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 I in a all and Sealand. I nailed it. Form the real Bermuda Triangle. Seriously, you're going to do Welsh and Icelandic in the same? Come on. That's just hey, clearly you know, that's spiteful. Easy. That, one's, that one's easy. Renee Y. Bizzle. Core with a bunch of R's. Edward Core. Grisvinsky. William Yeski. Bunny well, Bismuth. Bun Bun of Seething. Nice. Seth Swanson. <laughs> Drew Harris. Some Canadian. Laura Friedman. Kyle Lowe, Logan, Pernicious Ducks, Doug Fortune, Gavin Ferris, Michael Nelson, Bernie's Mittens, <laughs> nice, <laughs> Brooke Roddenbush, Jason Scott Roberson, Dylan Pierce, Jackie Thacker, Library Gnome, and Andrew Bozen. And also, a huge thanks to our Hall of Fame of all-time generosity for helping make this possible for 200 episodes. Thank Ooh. you to Daniel Siegel. Ooh. Oro Cat, Ooh. Abraham C. Cantor, Master Ooh. Debater, Miachi episode of Citation Needed, please. Oh, God. Oh, Paul that's a Svensson, great idea. I will happily do that. No. <laughs> that's not your lawn tiger. Sir Arcane, Annie Joy, Donna Allman, started at Scathing Atheist, and now we're here. Tell me Omni Zealous, Cat Victorino, Steve Andrews, Cybeth Mudek, Minx Meow. Michael Hughes, J. Hunter, Capital Three, G4, Bill Garthright, Israel Mursky, the Viking of Brooklyn, ooh, ooh, Mark Herzman, Alex Eckersley, Michael Rops, ooh, Jonathan ooh. Moyer, Suzanne August, J. Owens, Fred from Colorado, Freddie G, Alex K, Catherine Kuldehoff, Susanna Poyalainen, the Artful Dodger of Toronto, Deborah Smith, the Attractive Distractor, ooh, ooh. Dan Griffith, Alexander Schmals, Henry Lewis King Jr., Mitchell, Chris Carr, Sin R. Johnson, Chris Maney, and April Poff. Thank you so much. Favorite listener. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more Dick Jokes Free of Charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D.O.D. Minus, and Citation Needed. Available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slonick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. 
Until next time, catchphrase sign off. Boy, yeah, 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 yeah. Bam, 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 bam. Bam, 200 episodes. 200? Bam. Confetti, confetti, confetti. Family. Rocket Sword. <laughs> rocket Swords are awesome. Rocket Swords right? are awesome. This game has Rocket Swords, Heath. It has Rocket Wait, Swords. Wait, seriously? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you, you confuse can... <laughs> you confuse nice. your weapon to like basically anything in the environment. So you can have like a mushroom there's sword. There's rockets in the environment? Yeah, there's all like so the 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 the, the ancient Zonai uh, technology has been unearthed. And so there's like rockets and there's fans and there's these fire Sorry, hydrants. The that... Zonai? Yeah. Like Zion, I feel like this is a lizard alien conspiracy. Is thing. A, it's a little Jewish. If can a I little give bit, you a little, little bit? bit. I, it feels like space lasers. Just G- saying. Ganondorf's nose has a very like German propaganda, circa nineteen thirty-seven Yikes. kind of. A, yeah, there's. He's hot though. He's like Ganondorf. Is yeah, he's high. He's ripped. Hot. He's ripped. Yeah. He's a sporty Jew. I mean, when you Google a Zonai, you don't get a non-Semitic image. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Cool. Maybe maybe these two universes, Hogwarts Legacy and this one, can intersect <laughs> Cross over, in a new yeah. game after this. There we go. We found it. Jesus. This is, but this is a good enough game that I feel like if it were explicitly anti-Semitic, I'd be like, I get it. You got to play it. You can no, skateboard. Yeah, right. no, you you would, can yeah, skateboard. So, yeah. Yeah. You can't skateboard. In it it isn't. I should I should be clear that like for no, the purposes not. of humor we've made. But but yeah, but w- once you brought up Hogwarts Legacy, I'm like, oh, that is a problem in gaming. We should probably. <laughs> yeah. I should probably clarify because. And Eli's like, we might have space lasers. I don't know. I'm not at the top. There ranks. are space That's lasers possible. in this game. Though. There's space lasers. They're, the zone I have. Space are you lasers. serious? The zone I yes. do have space lasers. Yeah. This is a big problem based on the <laughs> tiny amount that I know so far. <laughs> You guys are like, no, but it's a good, it's a good game. Let's so. just stop digging, guys. Let's just stop. <laughs> we just stop digging. <laughs> hey, here's another thing that I just found when I googled Zonai. The Zonai also have things called golems, which is a guardian construct. Are you serious, Jewish? right now, dude? Come on. Okay, we're not. We're the, done. We're done the, talking. We're done. It. So the term golem is not used in the game. Golem is just the term for that type of thing. It's a, that, oh, that, okay. Yeah, so <laughs> conceptually, it's, it's they're, a Jewish yeah. monster, they're, they're con- but not by they're, name. They're, that's well, that's they, cool. they, whoever wrote the article that he that that Eli is using as a source used the term okay. Gollum, <laughs> not the game. So the people who control the media are saying that it's nope. Okay. Yeah, no, okay. and you know what? In the game, there is a person who controls the media that's not a Zonai. So there, there you go. Okay, it's obviously, there we go. It's obviously not. He's not. He's yeah, not yeah. controlled by the Zona. Is no, he? it's no. She's not. She's, she's okay. Yeah, it's a woman. It's a woman. It's progressive. It's cool. No, it's good. It's all good. It's actually a positive thing. It's a compliment. Compliment that you would be able. To control I wish I controlled the media. Media. Okay. Great. Right. Let's do headlines. Koroks are Filipino people. You know what? Just, <laughs> what? What are you doing? I was trying to bring it forward. What are you doing, man? I was what, helping. What? Yeah. What were you trying to do? <laughs> I figured. I was, uh, Heath, you were saying? No, no finish your thought. What? Because they're small. Is it... <laughs> small. Jesus Christ. Are they, are they small? I, I, f- I feel like that's the last bit, because like what the, the big thing, the big online meme is people torturing Karuk seeds, you know, strapping them to rockets and launching them into the atmosphere or sticking them to crosses and setting them on fire and shit. So like I feel like they're small is probably the least offensive way we can go from there. <laughs> there we go. Great. We'll we'll all finish the game and then we'll come back and figure out what race we think the Koroks are. <laughs> Together. And we're back. All right. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2023.